I'm literally the guy with all the gear and no idea. Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the first video for a couple of weeks. So we're four weeks out from the Kempton Park Marathon now. And um, so the injury I picked up, so peritonitis longus, uh, in my foot injury uh, has uh, improved. I've been managing it, icing a lot, a lot of kind of strength work, basically a bit of rehab. Um, and I wouldn't say it's gone away completely, but it's very much at a manageable level. So uh, the pain isn't getting any worse. Um, if anything, it's getting, I'd say, slightly better day to day. I'm able to run, which is fantastic. Um, I have managed to have a couple of weeks now of uh, consistent running. So managed 57K two weeks ago. And last week I managed 62K, which is my first week over 60k since January um, so I mean two weeks of training does not a marathon block make uh, but things are a lot more positive than they were now uh, in the interim had some fun went into a local running shop with my wife to get her a new pair of running shoes didn't intend to do anything because I've got too many shoes anyway however the guy in the shop shout out to Alton Sports in Farnham made us an incredible deal while my wife was trying on millions of shoes I said to him well I'll just try a pair on just to see how they feel they felt amazing and he said well I'll make you an offer as the godfather he made us an offer we couldn't refuse so I picked up a pair of uh, 220 pounds shoes for under 100 pounds you can never have too many yes I'm addicted to shoes and it having now got a ridiculous collection of running shoes I thought what would be interesting is to, to do a show off now, I'm very much an average runner, but I thought it'd be interesting to see just how much carbon shoes benefit your yeah, kind of average runner. Uh, so there have been some studies done on carbon shoes, uh, and the data seems to point to a uh, percentage in economy of between sort of 3 and 5%. But really the only reputable study that was done, and I'll link to, um, I think it's Old Man Runner, his channel, uh, he goes into them in some depth. Uh, it came out with the, uh, the Nike Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly having uh, a, uh, a significant benefit, and that was about it. All of the other carbon shoes at the time uh, sort of had a very sort of maybe a negligible improvement in running performance. Now this study is a couple of years old now, and there are new carbon shoes out all the time. And I don't have the money or the sponsorship to go out and buy all the hot new shoes and test them. So some of these shoes I'm going to be testing today are a little behind the times. However, I thought it'd be really it'd be interesting to see to test the shoes that I've got that do have carbon in a carbon plate or some sort of carbon fibre in them versus a pair without any carbon fibre plate. Okay, so uh, left to right in alphabetical order, starting with the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. So uh, these are the, probably the lightest of them. They have carbon rods in them which are supposed to uh, I think mimic the uh, the bones in your foot and give you a kind of a more natural uh, propulsion uh, light strike pro in them um, I've not had them long I've worn them for a couple of sessions found the light strike pro a little firmer than some of the other foams uh, but they are uh, supposed to be great um, they're not these aren't the laces that came with the shoes and the laces they came were like awful so I uh, sort of got rid of them um, and put in some old laces from another pair of shoes which are horrendously long and they don't match um, but that'll be a good one so I've run a, um, I've done about 20k in those a couple of runs uh, so that'll be interesting next we have the ASICS Nova Blast 3, uh, so no carbon plate in these, these are very much sort of easy day uh, recovery shoes for me, I think I've done about 350k in them, still plenty of life left, and um, we have the Flight Foam Blast Plus, I think there's about an 8 millimeter stack um, so that'll be interesting these should on paper be the slowest uh, at marathon pace so we'll see how they are then we have the Nike Alpha Fly version 1 uh, so you've seen my uh, comparison video on these before uh, I've done about 40k in these uh, including my half marathon PB set at Wokingham half recently I did roll my ankle on these which has caused me uh, all the problems uh, recently so I'm going to be careful running in these so I haven't run in them since Wokingham half uh, but on paper uh, those are these are the most efficient uh, shoes certainly at marathon pace so I'll be interested to see how they uh, stack up against everything else then we have the Nike 
Vaporfly version one. Um, so yeah, carbon plate in here, uh, Zoom X in the midsole. Now I've done about 450K in these, these are quite old, um, but I think they still feel great. I still use them for sessions. Did the London Landmarks half in them three weeks ago. They still felt fantastic for those. Uh, and I wouldn't have thought they lost me an awful lot of performance. So I'll be interested to see how they compare against the newer shoes and also uh, the non-carbon plated shoes. Then the latest additions in my crazy shoe collection, uh, the Socony Endorphin Pro 3. Uh, so these are, uh, I think these are 8mm drop carbon fibre plate. Uh, this is the uh, Power Run PB foam, I think, in these. You can see the plate in there. Um, so these are gorgeous. Didn't intend to buy them, as I say, uh, but uh, in the collection they uh, feel fantastic, really natural. They may well become my marathon shoe for the Kempton Marathon. Uh, be interested to see again where they stack up in the efficiency. But uh, time to get some of these on my feet starting with the Adidas. They already feel a lot lighter than the Neva Blast I was warming up in. Um, but firmer, a bit lower to the ground. Be interested to see what, uh, say how efficient these are. I've had a couple of runs in them. They haven't done amazing things to me so far, uh, but I've heard that Light Strike Pro takes a few runs to kind of settle in. So this will be my third run in them. Here we go, 2K, off we go. One done. Ah, Ten oh one for two kilometres. So uh, average pace of four fifty nine. So basically spot on. Um, second kilometre felt a lot better in the Adidas. Definitely would not want to run far in these. Five k probably ten k probably half marathon. No we. Um, so we'll see. I still think, don't think Light Strike Pro is doing an awful lot for me, but I can feel. You know, they are responsive, so I'll give them a go at a park run at some point, see how they go. On to shoe two. Okay, <clears throat> rep number two about to start. Um, this is in the Asics Nova Blast 3, which are kind of the same like easy day shoes, uh, recovery shoes. Uh, they really feel super soft. Um, here we go. of the positioning and the order of the shoes probably like the top the best position to be in was second because I've had a warm up got my aerobic system warm um, and yeah that felt good uh, I don't think five minute kilometers is my marathon pace but that's okay that's not what I'm going to be going for in four weeks time but that's fine it's still good little chance for me to uh, get the heart rate working again and dialing in um, it's faster than my steady pace um, but it's not quite at the speed perhaps that some of these shoes are designed to be racing at. Okay, so ASICs, Nova Blast 3 done, uh, time for the Alpha Flies. Okay, Alpha Fly version 1. Um, they are a pair of shoes that match my running top the best anyway. So we'll see. Last time I wore these, set my half marathon PB, but I can already feel how unstable they are just to walk around on which uh, yeah when your form goes at the end of a marathon that is something that you want to basically bear in mind however we'll see how they do over two kilometers at marathon pace um, I should say I had um, I've had a gel before starting my third rep I had a gel at the beginning um, and I've done sort of three lots of ten minutes including the warm-up so I'd have a gel roughly every 35 minutes in the race here we go
uh, average pace 457. It's very difficult not to run fast in these things. Um, 458 rather, it's just started raining on me which is a bit annoying um, it's not going to affect what I'm doing it's just BBC weather again so that was interesting you can see where they pay Nike the big bucks I mean once, once I've kind of clocked into getting over the awkwardness of running them they just sort of disappear onto your feet and um, I'd say of, of the reps so far uh, that's the sort of the rep I almost forgot I was running once you're just locked into a pace they're just ridiculously efficient and um, I'm pretty sure I probably had the lowest heart rate of the reps so far as well for the fastest pace so yep nice one alpha fly so far I'd say you're winning um, hopefully it'll stop raining anyway time to change into the vapor flies uh, and see what they've got see what the old guard has to say okay Nike vapor flies old favorites um, <clears throat> yeah, weirdly enough. Next, uh, compared to the Alpha Flies, they, uh, they almost feel low to the ground. <clears throat> <coughs> but now I'm very used to running in these. Uh, so this, this pair's done about 450k, so I'm not expecting them to be uh, totally in their prime, but it will be interesting to see um, how efficient they were compared to uh, the Alpha Flies. I actually put the Alpha Flies uh, back in the box with the cardboard uh, protectors back in. I sort of do feel they are quite special. Anyway, uh, off we go. Good. I think pretty comparable to the Alpha Flies. Uh, overall experiences, you definitely feel the ground more in the Vapor Flies. Uh, so, but at the same time, <coughs> I just I felt I was being like tipped forward a little bit more for a shorter race. That would have been great, but really, again, similar experience to the Alpha Flies. Really, I had the feet on. I could just almost forget I was running. Just kind of uh, just lock into a groove, um, start to kind of just uh, switch off, get into a groove of running, really. So, yeah, um, Nike very much winning the day so far. However, uh, let's, uh, got, let's see what Silkeny can do uh, for the last one. Okay, Silkeny Endorphin Pro 3. Um, well, compared to all of the super shoes, uh, including the Adidas. The uh, Socken and Dolphin Pro 3 is the one that's easiest to put on your feet. <laughs> they feel more like a normal trainer. The upper just kind of fits around your feet and the laces just do up fine. Uh, the others are, I have to say, all of them are a bit of a faff to get on. So uh, that's a win already. Um, the feeling of the foam is, is less sort of squishy and more bouncy compared to the Nike um, and softer than the, uh, the Light Strike Pro. So um, let's see how we get on. Maybe fatigue starting to kick in now. That was the fifth rep, so over 12k uh, in effort, including the warm up. But they felt nice, especially um, after a kilometer once I got into them. That was great. But the, um, I'd say, a bit like the other shoes, other than the Nikes, I had to remind myself to stick to five minute K pace. I had to check in a few more times, otherwise, I felt myself sort of lagging behind. As I say, that could be fatigue. Um, so it'll be interesting if I swap, flip the order of the shoes. What I might do is uh, sort of literally reverse the order. So start with the Sokonis and end with the Adidas um, and see how that goes. But yeah, that's been fun. Um, we'll look at the stats and uh, see which shoe 
came out as the most efficient at marathon pace uh, back at the house. Okay, so here you can see the uh, five events from Garmin. So we've got Sulconi and Dolphin Pro 3 at the top, the Adidas at the bottom. You can see that the uh, distances are all the same, uh, 2.01 kilometers. Uh, the times are virtually the same, 10 minutes and 2, 10 minutes and 1, 9.59, 10.01, 10.01. And the paces are virtually identical, 4 minutes 59 per kilometer, except for the Alpha Fly, which was 4 minutes 58 per kilometer. I managed to run one second per kilometer quicker over the 2k, uh, which doesn't seem that much, but uh, when we take into account everything else, it might be significant. So if we look at the um, other stats, I've done a, um, a Tim Gross style spreadsheet here. So um, <clears throat> I've uh, got the order uh, Adidas first now. The average heart rate, you can see that the uh, Alpha Fly and the Vaporfly at 152 beats per minute were the, uh, the overall winners. The Nova Blast was the least efficient at 156 overall heart rate. Um, the Adidas and the Sulconi and Dauphin Pro 3 were the same. Um, maximum heart rate as well, the Nova Blast 3 peaked at 166. Um, which really is uh, creeping up towards threshold zone, really. So um, running Nova, uh, running marathon pace in the Nova Blast Three was a uh, is uh, not something I'd recommend. Um, and the Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly again were um, uh, peaked at one six two, which uh, isn't too bad. Um, it says heart rate lap two in column three, um, and that's because I sort of uh, discounted the first. Uh, kilometer really because uh, I'm starting from walking so uh, it might be it, it takes a, a while to get up to uh, to full speed so um, yeah it's noticeable that the um, the average heart rate for lap two for the alpha fly was in fact the lowest at 152 which is uh, really only just above my easy zone um, and uh, night vapor fly 154 um, then the endorphin pro 155 the uh, Takumi Sen 8156 and then the Nova Blast uh, Heart Rate Lab 2 159. Um, the fourth column is easy time. So that is the amount of time in the 10 minutes in which I was running in my easy zone, which is below uh, 150 beats per minute. Um, and you can see again that the, um, the Alpha Fly it had the longest time in the sense I was running in my sort of easy zone um, for two minutes and nine seconds out of those ten minutes. Um, the Vaporfly, two minutes and seven. Um, and then, interestingly, the Takumi Sin 8 was the next best, so uh, that was a one minute 57. However, because I went first in the uh, Adidas Takumi Sin 8 um, following the warm up, um, that's I would probably put it down to that um, because it was the the, the first time I'd run at marathon pace, so it, it, again, it took my heart rate a while to get going. Um, and the Nova Blast 3 and the Sukoni and Dolphin Pro 3 were uh, similar there, but then um, the Nova Blast let itself down in, in other factors. So, um, yeah, overall from that, the Alpha Fly, Alpha Fly kind of comes out on top, really. Um, although it's uh, amazing how close the Vapor Fly was to it. Um, but then if you think back to the previous slide, I did run slightly faster in the Alpha Fly as well, albeit a second, but it's a second over two kilometers, you know, you add that up, um, that's, you know, 20 seconds faster over, uh, over a marathon uh, for less effort as well. So, and the Vaporfly, they have done 450 kilometers on them now. Uh, the Alpha Fly is sort of still brand new, but uh, clearly I'm, I'm most efficient in the Alpha Fly. So I also ranked each shoe in terms of uh, how it felt to run in at marathon pace. Um, so again, the Alpha Fly felt like it was the kindest to run in. It was the softest, the bounciest. Um, although, uh, as I said, I could see in the video that I was uh, pronating slightly, uh, sort of rolling inwards um, on my left foot. And it may well be that I was on my right as well, but I couldn't see from the camera angle. Uh, anyway, so the uh, Alpha Fly was the most comfortable, followed by the Vapor Fly, uh, Sorconi and Dauphin, uh, in Dauphin Pro 3. Can't say Sorconi for some reason. Um, uh, then the Nova Blast, my easy shoe. And finally, I didn't really enjoy running in the Adidas uh, Takumi Sine very much. I was still waiting for that Light Stripe Pro to kind of soften up. Um, but then again, maybe it is billed as a 5K, 10K shoe. Maybe I'm just 
not running fast enough really in it to get the uh, the benefit um and yeah overall the uh, alpha fly wins uh, followed closely by the vaporfly Sarconi in dolphin pro three third uh takumi sene overall because it was more efficient fourth and the nova blast uh, last so yeah in conclusion carbon shoes work uh, they do make you more efficient uh, certainly uh, you know only over two kilometers i can clearly see you know the difference that having these uh, super shoes do make and uh, the alpha fly and the vapor fly seem to have uh, be significantly more efficient than the uh, endorphin pro 3 which is one of the leading competitors on the market so um yeah i mean although these you know there are other uh, show shoes that are coming into competition with the uh, the nikes at the moment they clearly are the market leaders um for a reason Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, what I think I'll do, this video's got quite long. I will post a follow-up um, when I reverse the order of the shoes. But until then, you're only racing yourself. Good luck out there.